Discover the next level in entertainment. Sky Cable's Evo Box is the latest product that lets you access over 190 channels, built-in streaming apps, and more than 5,000 downloadable apps and games. Get yours now at mysky.com.ph slash skyevo or visit the Sky Zones in Ayala Center and Gaisano Grand Mall, Lapu-Lapu. Women. I am Vanessa Balbuena. Today we will be talking to the Mayor of Cordova in Cebu, Mayor Mary Therese Sitoy Cho. Mayor, thanks for joining Power Women and Happy International Women's Month. Happy Women's Month to Ms. Van. Thank you for inviting me to this um, wonderful show. And um, I'm glad to be with you and it's my pleasure and it's really an honor to be talking to you. It's been almost a year since Cebu first went into lockdown. How has Cordova been coping with the pandemic? Well, like everybody in the world, Cordova was badly hit by this health crisis. Our constituents who are employed have lost their jobs. Well, um, fishing being a natural livelihood of the town is a blessing in disguise, you know. Um, since our people are used to fishing, Food for daily existence still there. Pasalamat na lang ming na naabli abut sa amu ang kadagatan para amu ang isudan sa amu ang mga kanon ang rice. So ang amu ang gipangita na lang ang kanonon ng rice. But for the LGU, for the management, we are coping up with the service required of us. Employees of the municipalities have been reporting to work. Despite the COVID scare, we have not tried closing the entire municipal government even once. Um, service continues, you know, and uh, even the flag ceremony every Monday still continues while we face the crisis. As a mayor, how has the past year been for you? During the early months of the lockdown, what was your mindset like? Um, the past year was really difficult, but a rich experience for me as well, as all other public servants. COVID has literally forced us to bring our level of service to our constituents higher. Mm -hmm. um, during the early months of the lockdown, we were really grappling on what to do and how to fight the pandemic. We did not have any guide. It was practically new for everyone, but I was up for the challenge. I have to be because I know that my people are looking at me and I, I cannot lose hope, but I don't want my people to be scared and lose hope also. And the greatest challenge was being away from my family, especially from my husband. He was stranded in Korea. It was just me and my children with my mother. However, since I have to go out and reach out to the people, I consider myself always a bearer of the virus. And I have to separate myself from them because I don't want to endanger them. So we're living in one house, but... There was a period that I cannot look at them personally. I mean, uh, I cannot touch them. I cannot talk to them near. Uh, I have to be afar and I cannot embrace them. So basically from March to June or July, um, I cannot go near to them. And if I have to talk to them, then I have to do the video call. It's just like... Um, we are not living in the same house. And especially being away from my husband that time, uh, it's really 
difficult because um, I don't have somebody to talk to, uh, especially about my um, uh, what I'm doing in LGU about my other problems here. Um, but uh, it's good thing that we have this um, Facebook and Messenger, and we can also talk even far away. So that that was really the challenge I've been through last year. Good thing uh, my husband also uh, came last November. And now um, we are all together. Our family is um, already intact this time. And uh, hopefully uh, we will have the vaccine for those who really want to be um, injected by the vaccine. So uh, I hope this crisis will be over soon. We're glad to hear, Mayor, know that your family is complete again. And that's a yeah. sacrifice of every frontliner, no, to sacrifice intimacy mm -hmm. with one's family because you're serving your public. Now, that was mm -hmm. uh, your major challenge personally. But in uh, comes to being mayor, what's the biggest challenge you had to bang last year? Yes, being a mayor, my decisions always affect other people, especially my constituents. And it is difficult because whether you like it or not, your decision will always have negative effect on one side and positive on the other. One of my primary considerations is that the number of people who will be most benefited of my decisions is really um, what I am looking into. I always look at the majority, not the minority. Mayor, have there been instances since you sat down in 2016, no? Have there been instances that you had to choose between, say, um, attending a school program for, for your kids and fulfilling your duties as mayor? Na ba yung mga ina na struggle and how do you deal with that? Yes, always. Because uh, uh, my work is really uh, is really demanding, you know, and uh, the, I have to also attend the needs of my children in school, especially the need of the presence of the parents. So I just have to, uh, sometimes I just have to cancel my schedule and then just I'll be there for a while and then run to my appointment. <laughs> Uh, I have to cope everything, especially when there is a call for parents in the school of my children. So multitasker, Kaayo. <laughs> yes, yes, multitasker and then delay uh, because I, I, I cannot say no to my child and I, I, I have already I have already an appointment. so I cannot also but I cannot cancel everything. But um, na alam yun mga delays. I'll just have to explain to my ano an appointment with me or kato ako mga kamiting na malate late lang and I'll have to catch up. So ingon ana magdagan dagan. <laughs> no, mayor when mayor when we hear sito you know, it's synonymous to the political. Uh, for our viewers, can you briefly share to us how you got into politics? Well, um, I have to admit it, public service has never crossed my mind before, especially politics. I, I, don't, I don't like so much uh, the word politics. <laughs> uh, I was doing good business years. I have been assisting my father in the tourism aspect when he became the mayor of Cordova. And one day, my father asked me if I want to help the town more as an elected official, and um, I guess in our blood, and there, um, I am here. <laughs> and I grew up in Cordova. I saw and experienced how laid back and how far it was from the developed cities like Cebu City, Lapu Lapu City. Now, every time I see how far we have come, I feel the worth of my being in public service, there are ups and downs, there are problems and challenges, but what is most important is making 
and then making change happen in the place. So, in a and way, the construction of the new bridge, um, yes, right? Yes. The future is even a yes, way yes. Of Actually, it was just a dream of my father way back 40 years ago. And, um, we never thought that it would be re really realized. So, it happened um, in my first term the groundbreaking of the third bridge, and it will also happen the um, finishing of the construction in my second term. That would be last year, uh, next year, um, around February or March to April. So uh, I'm really lucky enough to have this project from my father. Mayor, while females in public office are no longer rare or unique, no, but it is still predominantly um, filled with males. Um, if you have any experience of being belittled or say your opinions dismissed because of your gender. Yeah, um, sometimes I can feel the, that some people, especially some men, really um, had doubt. Uh, about women's capabilities. But um, I think um, we, we, some women also, uh, already proved to them that we can lead. We can uh, be part of the governance. May are two countries that have responded well to the pandemic were led by women, Germany and New Zealand. In the United States, they also just elected the first female vice president. Do you think the world has made it easier for women these days? Uh, well, um, in this new generation, uh, I can say that really the, the world or the people already accepted women to be leaders. But um, although uh, generally the world is really patriarchal, uh, Women has to exert more effort to prove our worth, to prove our capabilities, to make a mark. However, the good thing is that the people, men and women alike, once they see a woman's worth, a woman's capability, a woman's strength, we already recognize the same. And people have accepted the fact that women can lead. Women can be president. Women can be mayors. Getting there is still difficult. And it's really a work in progress also. Now, someone once said that you, in, if you invest in women, it's like you're investing in the world. Is, mm -hmm. is that a statement that you agree on? Um, yes, I agree. Because um, women have, who are naturally mothers are barriers of humanity. The development of every human being starts in a woman's womb. Every mother starts imprinting herself, her character, her whole being on her child. The moment that a child was planted in the womb. So yes, investing in women, in a mother for her to fully develop herself, her confidence, her value as a woman brings about a double, triple, return of investment in the form of beautifully molded human beings. And you know, all human beings came from a mother. Mayor Dihasa Cordova, would you have programs that protect women and children? Especially that years ago, Cordova was uh, reported to be a hot for cyber sex traffic. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we have this uh, programs that um, really that are really sustained, you know. Um, since I was the vice mayor, we see to it that we we have this um, unit to protect ch children, the children's rights protection unit, and the women's rights protection unit, and we have also the women's desk here in our LGU in our municipality, and we have already um institutionalize the programs and the uh, and, uh, um, advo advocates of the protection of women and children 
So it's really ongoing. We have this collaboration uh, with the church and with the, um, with the schools to protect our children and to protect our women also. I'm, I'm also proud to say that the women here in Cordoba are, are already empowered. The Women Federation have been there for almost 15 years. And every year, all the, the women, the women um, officers in each barangay, the, the Federation officers are um, bonding. And then we, every month we have also this uh, reporting from them, what happened to our women in, in barangays or in our furoks. So everyone is updated what is already happening. And we have also this livelihood projects for them. So accountability and giving women their an alternative so that they will not yes. be forced to. Yes, <laughs> especially those women who are just in the house. To stay in the house because um, they have a lot of children or, or, yeah, or they cannot go to work. So we are helping them to find another way or alternative um, livelihood so they can help also their husband. Mayor, now while women today, no, um, undoubtedly we enjoy better opportunities than women before. Pero um, by Karun, yes. they see also a different set of pressure, especially when they are bombarded with so much social media. Now, what could be a silly mm -hmm. concern no, for elder women maybe life or death issues for women of the day. So what would you tell your daughter on how to navigate all these pressures? Um, yeah, um, we can, even my daughter also um, read some news about um, uh, violence against women. And then um, she asked me about it and uh, I, I, I always tell her, uh, you know, I have a daughter. I know the challenges that um, she must face and overcome when she goes out there on her own. What do I tell her? I said to her, um, stop defining yourself as a woman. Mm -hmm. Live your life as a human, human being. Dream, plan. Play, work, fight, love, cry, laugh, jump, or do whatever it is that you have to do because you are a human being, not just a woman. Now, Mayor, this is, this is a fictional statement no, that I, I saw in one of my favorite series. It said, this is actually a conversation between... British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher and Queen Elizabeth. The oh. Prime Minister told the Queen now, for her though, women are not suited for high office because they tend to be emotional. Do you agree? Oh. I don't agree. Well, um, being emotional also can, uh, can affect our, um, our uh, let's say our work or our the state of mind. But uh, being emotional is also a helpful way, you know, because we are sensitive to other people's feelings, and uh, we want to take care of other other people. So that is from our emotions. And um, when we when we work, then it it also uh, came from our heart. Our soul came from inside. So that is from our emotion. So emo being emotional is not a hindrance to be working in the government as official or to lead a country or a town. So it's not a bad thing, actually. No, Finally. it's not. Well, you know, why, why do mothers lead their children well, diba? <laughs> Finally, Mayor, what would you tell young girls or women who have yet to find their way in the world? Pardon? 
What would you tell young girls or women who have yet to find their way in the world? Well, um, as, as I've said, they just have to stop defining themselves as women. They just define themselves as human beings, equal to men. And uh, we may not be equal physically, but we have, we, we can do, we can do some things that men cannot do also. So um, it's about being a human being. Uh, we can do what we have to do. A very inspiring and empowering message. Cordova Mayor Mary Therese Sitoicho, thank you for joining Power Women. Thank you also for having me here. I am very um, pleased and it's really an honor to be chosen as one of the empowered women in Cebu. Thank you. Thank you, Van. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. This is Power Women Season 4.